Before we really dive in and talk about the new single, I want to like go back in time to that creative process of Thong Song and like your experience with, with Bob Robinson. How did he yes. kind of impact you to become a better artist, better performer, better singer? Are, are you talking about um, the producer? Rob uh, from Tim, Tim and Bob? Yeah. yeah. Or Ro Bob Rob Robinson who produced, this, uh, who produced uh, Thong Song with you. Uh, right, so Tim and Bob. Yeah, yeah. Tim okay, and Bob. okay. <laughs> Man, no, uh, I, I never, I never hear his full name. Yeah. Most of the time when I'm talking about him, I, I talk about, uh, you know, him and his his uh, production partner. Right. But yeah, man, um, they sent me a whole uh, CD of music, and uh, the thong song, um, well, what later became thong song was just a snippet of, um, it was like a sample of Eleanor Rigby. Okay. And um, so I, I took it. Apparently, they didn't initially want me to hear it. But I heard it, man, and um, uh, I had never heard um, the Beatles song Eleanor Rigby before I heard them, um, you know, put that like dope beat to it. Yeah. So, you know, I called them up. I said, hey, man, I love this sample. Can we stretch it out and make it into a song? So, you know, they basically stretched it out. And um, once we did that, I started to write to it. Um, and then um, collaboratively, man, we came together and... Uh, once the song started taking form, I realized that we probably wouldn't want to pay one of my major influences, Michael Jackson, because he, he had, had owns the Beatles anthology. We want to, we did, I didn't want to pay him um, for the thong song, so I ended up rewriting the string line, hiring um, uh, some string players who played on uh, Star Wars to play the strings over, and then, um, and then. Uh, it was grooving, it was grooving, and then I was like, it's kind of missing something. So then I came up with the idea to modulate the song, and then we came up with the changes. Uh, it was it was a fantastic process, man, because, like I said, it started off, the beat was already dope. The beat was dope from the beginning. Right. Um, but what it became after we collaborated is, you know, what what you have today. That's insane that it came from Eleanor Eleanor Rigby. Like yeah, that's that's amazing. Like never would have imagined that. Yeah, and then you know we now changed the key and everything though, because we yeah, don't want to. That's what that's what kind of like influenced it at the same. Yeah, time. yeah. The influence was definitely like I said. I had never even heard the song before. That's so cool. um, but hey, I'm number nine in the contest today, and I heard that the Beatles have a song called N Number Nine or yeah, something like that. So hey, <laughs> hopefully you know we can you know have history repeat itself yeah. with it's up. We got we got to get you some uh, some Beatles records so you could take a listen to all their tracks. I've 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 heard a lot of them and everything I've heard I've loved, um, and I, I've actually it actually uh, prompted me after um, Thong Song to go get their greatest hits. So I've heard a lot more of their music. So now moving forward, <laughs> now moving forward to tonight and tonight's performance with It's Up. Like, talk to me about the creative process for this single. And you know, obviously it was a big difference from the previous material that you've done in the past. Yes, so. Yes. Um, what was your reasoning by, uh, behind wanting to perform this single live tonight? Um, you know, when I when I started um, when to have the conversation about being a part of this show, uh, I reached out to all of the producers that I've worked with. I think I reached out uh, to Bob, but I think he was in the in the middle of a project, mm. so he wasn't able to send me um, anything new. But um, some of the producers that I've worked with before sent me some music, and it was all really good music. Yeah. But it's to, to me, it sounded a little predictable. Mm. And with this show, I felt like I had an opportunity to have a fresh look, probably with some um, people, um, you know, out there who don't even, who weren't even born when, my, when yeah. I was first, uh, had my foyer into um, the mainstream. So I was like, hey man, let's, let's see if we could do something that doesn't sound like anything that's out or anything I don't think people would do on the show. And so, um, uh, the producer I work with is um, actually uh, Nate. We call him Nate Torius, and he uh, he's my band leader. And he actually was around for Thong Song when you heard the um, Thong Song remake yeah. um, that that I did with Foxy Brown. Uh -huh. That extra music that's on there, that was him. So fast forward to now, Nate Torius has been around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from man, we know each other since kids. He's my band leader. Um, he sent me this record, and it was a very similar scenario to with, with uh, Tim and Bob. And he said, I don't know if you're going to like it, but here I was working on this. And I heard it, and I was like, yo, I think this is it. It's up. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So as far as your performance goes tonight, like, what would you say was your most comfortable portion of the, of the performance? And what would you say was your biggest challenge? Um, my most 
comfortable uh, part of of performing was actually performing. Um, you know, we're we're um, with my group Drew Hill. We're somewhere different every week. Yeah. So the performance part was was simple. Um, the part that I wasn't sure about was how the audience will receive something new, something fresh. And um, man, the energy they gave me back was um, just very humbling and very gratifying. Well, congratulations with tonight. I'm excited for more music from you. I'm, I'm guessing that's what's yeah, I in. Some, I got there some. I got some. I got some more bangers. So be looking out for the new Cisco album.